I noticed on your website that you have two offices, one in Cleveland and one in Japan. Why do you have an office in Japan? What made you decide to go there? Japan, one of the things that I learned about Japan, well, first, let me start by saying we actually have you know, customers all over the world. So it could be, you know, a lot of our, I would say a solid 35%, 40% of our customer base is well outside of the US. Even though we are a US based company, a lot of our customers are outside. But what we've found is we really don't need an office in anywhere in Europe. We have partners, we have companies who just go to our website, learn about us, or they'll work with a local partner and they can have that and build that relationship that way. Japan is very different in that having that local presence is very important. And one of the things that we have by having that presence here is not only not only people here, support here, and the ability to, to work with customers, but the market here is so different. It's so foreign. And what's amazing here is a lot of people think of Japan as like the land of robots, the land of super high technology. And to some extent, that's true. You know, the, the, the public transportation system is absolutely world class, amazing. Some of the things technology wise here are certainly by far best in the world. However, software development eh, may as well be like from, you know, straight from 1990, you know, sending requirements over fax machines and all that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's pretty rough. So the concept in Japan of agile development simply is not there at all. It's starting. Okay. So there people are starting to understand agile. They're starting to see the business value. They're starting to see good. If we do smaller releases sooner, it'll be better. But that cultural transition is very difficult to do. One of the reasons that we decided to invest in Japan is we're one of the only DevOps tools companies here. And I believe that we can really help usher in agile development by introducing DevOps tools by showing people, look, you can get your releases from idea to production really fast. All you got to do now is just make those ideas a lot smaller. Don't let the IT departments, don't let the dev and the ops and the dysfunction of having no automation and having, you know, so, some folks aren't even using source control. Don't let that dysfunction be the thing that slows you down. Have that go fast and eventually the business is going to pick up and start uh, giving some new ideas. It's been slow going, but so far, so good. I think we're doing a lot of evangelism here. We are one of the organizers of DevOps Days Tokyo, and that has, in the past couple years, really helped usher in a lot of these ideas from sort of the old school version of DevOps, which was, you know, DevOps is nothing but Linux uh, configuration automatic tools run by a small department who automates everything, to kind of what everyone understands DevOps is today, which is organizational transformation. So one of the things we've done is really give that image of what DevOps means, and it's slowly starting to take hold. So we hope in the next, in the coming years, we will really start seeing this particular market transform and hopefully help some of these companies that I just, I don't get how they develop in this, in this very traditional waterfall method. It's, it's like just taking a step back into time. My experience communicating with people in Tokyo when I've been out, out there, obviously uh, not a Nito team, but some of the people we've met at, uh, you know, Nomikai, which obviously is more of the social meeting kind of a happy hour version of Japanese business culture is I think uh, pretty much everyone is interested in these ideas on an individual level and then feels how do they go up against the machine? How do they go up against the entire culture? And it seems like a lot of people feel maybe alone in that and they don't even know that if they raise their hand at their cubicle, maybe not the person next to them or the person across for them, but the person, you know, across and two down would also raise their hand and go i've been i've been reading that as well and i'm interested and there's just not really that openness or ease of communication where people feel comfortable with with that at this exact moment in the culture yeah it it goes back to that idea you know we have that western phrase the squeaky wheel gets the grease 
Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is it, it, that, and that's to sort of show how people tend to be complacent and not want to make much noise. You know, I think we, we say that to people to say, don't make too much of a noise. Don't call attention to yourself. They have a similar phrase in Japan, but it's a, it would translate a little bit closer to the nail that gets, the, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Mm, yeah. So that's a little bit, a uh, little bit harsher of a, yeah. of a phrase. Yeah. So uh -huh. the Japan version is uh, it, for any ambiguity. If somebody is like, well, sh should I make a noise? Because I don't want to be covered in grease. The yeah. Japanese version, <laughs> nobody wants to get slammed down like they. Yeah. Are.